Hello, this is Dr. Reginald Garman at Word of Faith Love Center. I pray that this message that you are about to hear will renew your mind, bless your soul, and inspire your spirit to love God through your living and to live God through your loving. I pray that you will share this message with someone else and be a blessing. And I hope to see you real soon at a live service right here at Word of Faith Love Center. If you open up your Bibles to Romans, I mean Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Amos chapter 3, verse 3, as well as John chapter 15. John chapter 15, verse number 1. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. The word of the Lord says this in Amos, and I want to read it to you in the New Living Translation. In the New Living Translation, it says, Can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? My Lord, my God. My God. I want to speak today from the subject, Get Along to Go Along. All right. Get Along. To go along. Can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? That if we don't learn how to get along, we will never go along. I'm going to try. Holy Ghost, have your way today. It was Martin Luther King that says that if we don't live together as brothers, then we will perish together as fools. And he said many times people don't know how to get along because they fear each other. Oh my God. He said they fear each other because they do not understand each other. Yeah. He said they do not understand each other because they do not communicate with each other. Oh but if we don't learn how to get along, we will not go along. So in our year of pursuit... As we are pursuing the things of God, we must understand how to get along with others. Because can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? There are some people that do not agree on the direction of your life right now. But yet you're trying to walk with them. You cannot walk with anyone that does not agree on the direction of your life. Because you will either grow with people or you have to grow from people. And so if we're going to go along, we got to learn how to get along. It was Roosevelt that said these words, the most important single ingredient to the formula of success is knowing how to get along with people. The most important ingredient to the formula of success is knowing how to get along with people. I want to read to you in John chapter 15 the words of Jesus and what Jesus said about this subject. He said in John chapter 15, verse number 1, he said, I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Oh, some of y'all should have shouted right there. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the van, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If you're going to go along, you got to learn how to get along with Jesus first. Because when you get along with him, he is the vine and we are the branches. And we cannot bear fruit without being connected to the vine. Because the vine is what feeds the branches. If you cut off the branch, the vine still lives. 
But if you cut off the vine, the branches will die. So we must stay connected to Jesus who is the vine in our life. And so this suggests that the fruit of a relationship is determined by the root of the relationship. Let me say that again. The fruit of the relationship is determined by the root of the relationship. You can always tell where somebody's relationship is by whether that relationship is bearing fruit. But if the relationship is not bearing fruit, then there must be something wrong with the root of the relationship. So when Jesus says that I am the vine and you are the branch, he said that you will, not you might, but you will bear much fruit because the fruit of the relationship is determined by the root of the relationship. And Jesus, who is divine, is a root in our life. And if we stay connected to him, it is no doubt in my mind that we're going to be fruitful as men and as women of God. So all I have to do is not necessarily worry about the fruit. I don't have to be a fruit chaser. All I have to do is be a God chaser. And if I can remain connected to the one that guarantees that fruit is coming in my life, then I don't have to worry about whether somebody else can determine whether my life is fruitful or not. Because my fruit is not determined by another person's root. It's determined by my relationship with God. So you may not like me, but I'm going to be fruitful anyway. You may not help me, but I'm going to be fruitful fruitful anyway. Why? Because my fruit is predicated on my root, and my root is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the Jehovah Rapha and the Jehovah Jireh of my life. Therefore, I just got to keep my eyes on the one that I'm connected to and realize that's what guarantees fruit in my life. Stop worrying about what people are saying or what people are doing or not doing. All you got to do is stay connected. That's why Jesus said, I am divine. And you are the branch. And without me, you can do nothing. So it suggests that sometimes we got to look at the root of things. And maybe certain relationships in our life are not fruitful because the root is not right. And if the root is not right, I don't care how much you try to talk to them, you're not going to get fruit out of that relationship. Because sometimes the root is not what you think it is. The root may be built in manipulation or it may be built in a different motive that you didn't realize, but the only reason they are with you is not because they love you, but the only reason they are with you is because what you can do for them. If somebody is with you based on what you can do for them, that is a root that's not going to produce much fruit. Because my God does not authorize relationships that are self-serving. And whenever relationships are self-serving, there's something wrong with that root. But when you get into a relationship and realize that God is using you to be a blessing to somebody else, and it's not what you can take from them, but what you can give to them, that is a godly relationship. So sometimes the root is not right. And so you got to do inventory of people that are connected to you and ask yourself, what is the root of our relationship? The root of my relationship with God is not based on him paying my rent. That's why when my rent is still not paid, I'm able to give him glory and be able to magnify his name because he's still God. 
my relationship with God is not based on a performance. So if he doesn't perform the way I want him to perform in my life, he is still my savior, my redeemer. Because the root of my relationship is not based on money. It's not based on position, but it's based on the fact that he took my dirty soul, washed it in red blood, and I came out white as snow. So a lot of times you, you, you will get exposed as far as what the root of your relationship is. When things are not going the way you want them to go in your life, how does your relationship change? When things are not the way you want them to be, and if your relationship changes because things are not going the way you want them to go, it will expose the root of why you're in that relationship. So when a pandemic occurs, and if you don't know the God that saved you, you don't have a relationship with God because you came to church. You got a relationship with God because he's the one that kept you in your right mind when you went through stuff. So even when the church doors are closed, you still got church at home. That didn't stop your praise because the root of your relationship has nothing to do with the four walls of this place. But when the doors do open, And you still got a problem. The root of why you serve and worship. I'm just talking. Y'all sit down. I, I haven't gotten in the message yet. I'm just, I'm just talking today. Because I realize some of our roots are wrong. And the roots, listen to me. Let me talk to you. The roots will expose relationships in your life. And in this year, 2022, you cannot go and pursue things until you start analyzing the root systems that are in your life. Because if the root system is wrong, then your fruit may produce, but it's not going to last. That's why Jesus said, your fruit shall remain. See, anybody can have fruit for a month. But can you have everlasting fruit? Anybody can be happy for a week. But can you have everlasting joy in your life? So when you look at the root system, you look at people that are connected to you and ask yourself, what is our relationship based on? What is the basis of our relationship? What is the root of our relationship? And is that root, is it godly or is it secular? Is it flesh? Is it the world or is it something that is born of God? Because whatever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So my root system determines my fruit system. Ooh, I like that. Say it with me. My root system determines my fruit system. My root system determines my fruit system. When the root is right, the fruit will be right. Amen? Oh, Jesus. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 and 40 said, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. 
Now, when you read this scripture, you realize there's an order to this thing called love. And there's an order to this whole relationship thing. So when we're talking about get along to go along, you got to realize that the love order is you got to love God first. You got to love God first. Secondly, this is the order. You got to love yourself. And then you love others. Why? Because you can't even love others until you love yourself. Because if you hate yourself, you're going to end up hating others. So we got to first get along with God. We got to get along with God. Get along with him so you can go along. Make sure your relationship with God is right because he is divine and we are the branches. And if that root system, if that root system is not where it needs to be, then no fruit in your life will remain. No fruit in your life. No fruit in your life. And if you hear anything else today, just know this. Your root system determines your fruit system. And you got to get your root system right with God. Why do you serve him? Do you serve him because you need something from him? That is a very manipulative root system that is not going to last. And so the challenges of our life, you really know your friends not in the good times but in the lean times. Because everybody can be your friend during the good time. Jesus said, love your enemies, but anybody can love those that love them. He said, you don't don't impress me by loving people that love you. He said, love your enemies. That impresses me. Give to those that do not have the power to give to you. See, that's your root system. Do you give in order to get something back? See, that's a faulty root system. Do you give only when you have something? That's a faulty root system. I give, I sow seed even when I need that seed for something else. Because that's in my root system. My root system. Where, here's an important question. Where did you get your root system from? Is your root system, is it from your experiences in life? And you got to realize if you got a problem trusting people and forgiving people, that root system was developed by all those crazy folks you used to connect with. Oh, we real quiet in here. So we got to look at our own root system and say, why, why do I have a problem trusting people? Because if your root system is based on your experiences, no wonder you don't trust people. Because everybody that you used to trust did something to you. But if your root system is in God, then you will learn how to trust in God and not lean to your own understanding. So we got to learn how to build our root systems right. And that's what I'm going to teach you today. It's how to build your root system right, and I'm out of time. Let me, let me, let me, let me give you, God, God gave me 10 things of how to get along so you can go along. And I, I want to give you, let me give you one then, because we got to take communion. That's the most important thing than my message. <laughs> I wouldn't even be preaching if it wasn't for communion. Let me give you this. If you're going to get along, number one, you got to learn how to love and accept yourself. Learn how to love and accept yourself. The only relationship in your life that is continual and therefore most important is with yourself. If you can't get along with you, Ooh, 
Woo, we got a problem. The first person you learn to get along with is you. We hear a lot of people these days talking about self-care. First of all, that I don't have any issues with that. The only thing I got issues with is that when they try to focus too much on self-care and they don't worry about the vine. They don't worry about their connection with God. Okay? Everything has an order. Remember, love God, then love yourself. So I, got, I don't have any issues, just so y'all know, I don't have any issues with that terminology of self-care. I just have issues with the priority we put on self-care versus God care. It's a priority thing with me. Because I feel as though if you spend all this time on self-care and you never get your relationship right with God, your self-care would not last. Y'all don't want to talk to me today. Y'all know that's right. How many times you tried to read some books and try to get some counseling, but it wasn't until you went in your own prayer closet and you had your own experience with the Father and God talked to you and God touched you that your life really turned around. Self-care, I don't have a problem. I believe self-care is critical to having healthy relationships. I think even in marriage, you need self-care. Even in marriage, you need time where you can get away and focus on you. You don't have to be up under me 24-7. Let me tell you this. Be careful with somebody that's got to be underneath you 24-7. Because what they're doing subconsciously, they're making you their God. And God is a jealous God. If you don't know how to be happy by yourself, if you don't know how to love by yourself, if you don't know how to have peace by yourself, then something is wrong with that first relationship between you and God. I am able to love my wife because I know how to love my God. You understand? But if you got to have somebody underneath you and around you 24-7, something is wrong with your self-development. All right, this group therapy right now, okay? This is group therapy. You got to be okay when somebody doesn't call you and realize that you are still loved and you are still important. You got to be okay when somebody doesn't want to spend time with you and realize that you got it going on. You got to be okay when somebody doesn't call you back and stop getting all upset and bent out of shape because you call yourself back. Talk to yourself in the mirror and say, I want to talk to you today. I want to spend some time with you today. That's right. You didn't text me. You didn't call me. You didn't come see me. So what? See yourself. Visit yourself. Take yourself on a vacation. Go out to eat with your I'm okay being by myself, and I still feel love. Come on. Come on. Self-care is important because you realize that you were fearfully and you're wonderfully made. And many a times, let me tell you this, when God really goes to work in your life, he pulls you by yourself anyway. He don't want nobody around when he's talking to you. He'll take you to a burning bush and talk to you and tell you to leave everybody else down in the valley. But if you always got to drag somebody with you. Ooh, sit down, sit down. I, we got to go. We got to go. Woo, Jesus. If you're not right, healthy, whole, then everything around you and connected to you will be affected. Spend time, people, God. I'm done. Start playing so I can be quiet. 
<laughs> when you are healthy and when you are whole, listen to me, things that imperfect humanity does to you will not affect you as much as it does. Humanity is imperfect. People will do imperfect things. They will say things that are not right. But because you're healthy and whole, you won't internalize external foolishness. Never internalize external foolishness because you cannot take in spiritual things when external people are speaking foolishness in your life. That's, right. That's why I don't internalize external foolishness. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know me. Amen, 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 amen. You really don't know me. Amen. Only God knows me. Yeah, yeah. So when you say things about me, you're saying things out of foolishness because you just don't know. But I forgive you for that. That's why I'm not going to allow you to affect me the way you think you are affecting me. And the best thing you can do for your enemies is to let them know that they have no effect on you. That's the best thing you can do for your enemies. And to let them know that you have no effect on my life because my fruit is determined by my root. Amen? Did you get something out of that today? Okay. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. All right, let me give you number two. I'm not going to go into it. I'm just going to give it to you. If you're going to get along, how to get along, you got to put more energy to being likable. Some of y'all are just not likable. And I'm going to talk about that next week, all right? Uh, communion. Let's get ready for communion. Can I? Do I have? I need some sacraments. Do I have sacrament? Oh. Whoo. He's a good, good father. Let's just sing a little bit of that. Is that okay? He's a good, good You're father. good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. Yes, Lord. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. Anybody need sacraments? Just raise your hand if you need sacraments. Raise your hand if you need sacraments. He's a good, good father, isn't he? It's who you are. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's a good, good father, Mama. And I'm loved by you. God loves you. He loves you. That's the root system of your relationship with God. He's a good, good father, Kayla. It's who you are. It's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved. Loved by you, God. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. It's who I am. He loves you. You're a good, good good father. He sent his only begotten son because he's a good father. It's who you are. And I'm loved. By you, he pulled you out of abundance and set the captives free because he's a good, good father. You're a good, good father. Good, good father, Lord. That's who you are. That's who you are, God. And I'm loved by you. I'm loved by you, God. Father, you loved me even when I was unlovable. Isn't that amazing to you? Listen, listen, based on what I was talking about today, isn't it amazing that the root system of God's love for you is not based on anything you have done? Yes. Woo! Just think about that for a moment. The root system of God's love for you is not based on anything you have done. Because the Bible says while you were still a sinner, Christ died for you. 
I don't know about you, that blows my mind. And with that kind of root system, with that kind of root system, there's nothing I can do to make God stop loving me. Ooh. Ooh, Jesus. I know y'all perfect all the time. I'm, I'm just thinking about that because I'm thinking about my times of imperfections. And I'm thinking about how that root system right there has produced so much fruit in my life, fruit that I didn't even deserve. But because his root system is based on unconditional love. Whew. So what he did, he said, I'm going to send my son to die for you. Why am I a Christian? I'm a Christian because throughout Scripture, there was never forgiveness of blood, forgiveness of sin without the shedding of blood. Throughout Scripture, I don't care if you're an Old Testament or New Testament person, but throughout Scripture, the continuity of the Word, the only method that God used for the remission of sin was through sacrifice. Not through intellectual philosophies. Because if you think you're saved through intellectual philosophy, then you would be drawn to any philosophy that's out there in the world. I'm a Christian because I realized I needed the blood of Jesus to make me right in the eyes of God. To pay the price for my sin so that I can be in right relationship with him. Because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So now I understand that my Christianity goes way beyond my mother dragging me to church. Can I get a witness? Woo, y'all been drugged too, amen? We had a drug problem, didn't we? We had a drug problem. But now today, because of the knowledge of his truth, we realize that we are who we are and we are where we are because we realize he's the only one that gave his only begotten son named Jesus Christ that died on the cross was buried and on the third day he rose again and now he's seated at the right hand of the father doing what making intercession for who uh. Woo, for me Jesus praying for me so every day every week once a month however you want to do it we take communion to remind us of that gift of love to say, Lord, we thank you for paying the price for my sin. Father, here we are today. And we, oh God, ask that you forgive us of any of sin and any transgression that we have committed. And that today we remember the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. And we ask that you will forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. As we partake of the Lord's Supper, the Holy Communion, the Holy Eucharist, thank you for renewing our faith in you. In Jesus' name, amen. So when Jesus Christ was gathered together with his disciples, you are his disciples, he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he said, this is my body which has been broken for you. By his stripes you are healed. Eat ye all of it in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, he took the cup. He said, this cup represents my new testament, my new covenant, my new agreement in my blood. You're saved by grace, not by works. 
He said, drink ye all of it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. If you need a church home, I want to invite you to come and make Word of Faith Love Center your church home. Just greet me here at the altar after service and say, Pastor, I want to become a member today. If today is the day that you become connected in relationship, and if the root of that relationship is right, I invite you to come and make Word of Faith Love Center your church home. And I'll be here at the altar waiting on you. Also, we have intercessors at the altar at the service. If you need special prayer and you want one of our intercessors to pray with you and for you, then they will be here at the altar waiting for you. Lord, as we leave this place, but never ever from your grace, may your spirit rest, rule, and abide with us. I pray your divine favor to surround your people like a shield. Protect them, guide them, guard them, O oh Father, and govern their life. And may you allow your manifold blessings to fall down upon them and open up doors for them that no man can close. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.